So, uh, so good evening and welcome to this uh, meeting of the Planning and Highways Committee, Thatch and Town Council. And the first thing for me to do is to read out the notice that this meeting is being recorded for publication on the Thatch and Town Council YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, if you're sitting, well, there's members of the public are not visible on the camera. Obviously, if you wish to speak, uh, if you have an opportunity arises, then uh, you would be caught. Um, so, moving on to the agenda. The Deputy Town Clerk, the uh, apologies for absence. Um, apologies from Councillor Walker. Councillor, so, yeah. Walker. Councillor from Councillor Walker. Uh, declarations of interest. Uh, and for the avoidance of doubt, uh, being a resident of Thatcham is not a declaration of interest in relation to the, uh, the planning application. <clears throat> Any other de declarations of interest? I see none. Thank you. So moving on to item three. Read and confirm accurate the minutes of the meeting held on the 22nd of November 22. Proposed, Chairman. Proposed. Say, thank you. Are there any comments before we... Uh, thank you for your... Are there any comments before we vote on approval? No, so are those in favour of approving it? Thank you. Thank you, you must have read it all before. So, <clears throat> moving on to item four, um, matters arising from the previous meeting. Uh, I'm looking for you, from you. <clears throat> Thank you. So, we move on to our first substantive item uh, of the evening, which is the local plan review. And we're pleased to welcome uh, Eric Owens, uh, who is the Interim Director of Place, if I got the title right. And um, he's uh, going to give us, a, give us a presentation and answer our questions at a fairly high level uh, on, the, on the local plan, um, which of course was uh, agreed by the meeting of full West Berkshire Full Council on the 1st of December. And first of all, I, I'd like to thank the, the, Eric or whoever is responsible for the decision to delay the start of the formal consultation until the 6th of January, uh, so that we get at least a little break over the Christmas period uh, for things other than reading the, the plethora of documents uh, that um, are already there and with more to be added later. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think probably best over to you, Eric, uh, to... Um, to uh, give an introduction, can we, before you start talking, can we just check the, the sound so that we, we don't, you don't sort of get halfway through the first sentence? So could you sort of say something not important so we can check we can hear you? <laughs> uh, good evening, Chair. Good evening, members. Can you hear me OK? Fine, thank you. Hey. Thank you. Um, well, I was just going to give a very brief overview of where we've got to with the local plan work. Uh, and then it's really um, inviting um, uh, questions through you, Chair. And then anything I can't answer, and I'm sure there will be a few in terms of technical detail. If we're able to capture those <laughs> comments and, and take them away, I have um, agreed with your team that we would come back in January to give a bit more of a detailed engagement with yourselves when the team are available for uh, for that engagement after we, we start the public consultation, if that's OK. Thank you, yes. So, so yeah, I'm Eric Owens, Interim Exec Director of Place at uh, West Berkshire. Good evening, everyone. Um, I was just going to very briefly outline where we've got to. So um, West Berkshire Council on the 1st of December approved the local plan uh, regulation 19 version or the version of the document to go forward for regulation 19 consultation. Um, and that will commence on the 6th of January and finish, I think it's around the 17th of February. Uh, so mid-February, basically. So it'll be a six weeks consultation. Um, Chair, is, is, uh, I'll, take, I'll take your um, take your plaudits there. We did, we did discuss long and hard whether we should engage and start the consultation prior to Christmas. But one of the reasons we decided not to was to allow people to break and also to allow people to start reading the documents in advance of the public consultation starting that would give additional time. So where we've got to now um, is the, the team are very busy in the background, um, double checking the documents, uh, ensuring that the, the documents sequencing paragraph numbers and all those other fact checks uh, happen before they're finalised. There's a couple uh, technical appendices that we're waiting on from consultants uh, on a few technical reports, which need to be uh, finalised by them um, after a few 
minor changes that's happened as well. Um, they're, they're received and those along with a number of other documents through the proofreading and um, consistency checking process are going to be uploaded to the website ready for the consultation to begin on the 6th of Feb. Sorry, 6th of Jan. Uh, after that consultation starts, um, the team will be available to, to go and meet and engage with um, councils and other bodies who wish to have further discussion on the documents. Uh, their role will be to provide clarification of the content of the document and clarification in terms of how we've got reached to where we have with various policies within it. And then really it's for uh, um, individuals and respondents to consider the document as a whole and individual policies and submit their comments back into the council. Uh, and we will then collate those and um, categorise those and they'll be then put into a document to submit into, uh, into the plan inspector. Uh, and the target date for that is around the 23rd-ish of March. Uh, and then after that, we're now then in formal examination and we'll then work and engage with the inspector. And the hope is during the course of the summer of next year, we'll have the examination. So that's the that's the broad programme uh, in terms of which we're looking to take forward. And that's where we've got to in the latest position of the documents. Okay, thank you. So um, I, I guess that the main interest uh, uh, this evening is policy SB17, uh, which is the strategic um, policy for the Northeast Action Site. So if I kick off with the questions, it'd be helpful if you could explain the thinking behind the reduction from 2,500 houses in more than a planned period to 1,500 houses in one planned period, uh, and where the number 1,500 houses originated from, how that was that number was developed. Yeah, so we had a... Obviously, there's a lot of comments on uh, the Northeast Satchel allocation through the Reg, 9, Reg 18 version mm -hmm. um, and consultation. Um, we, the team assessed those responses, I looked at it again. Uh, we discussed how it could be delivered and whether we needed to deliver 2,500 houses through a single allocation. And then there was a discussion around, well, the actual issue there was uh, the allocation goes went beyond the plan period. So there's a conversation around bringing that allocation back to within the plan period. Um, and that's where the, the numbers partly came from. And then because the plan has moved forward from, I believe, 2036 to 2039, the additional numbers from the 1250 and moving up to 1500 as a result of the, 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 the years of the plan period moving up to 2039. Thank you. I think, in fact, the the original what the, the Reg eighteen was twenty 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 to twenty thirty seven okay. uh, on the cover, and the, the current one is twenty twenty two to twenty thirty nine. So they're both actually notionally seventeen year periods. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll pass over to if there are question, if questions from other councillors. I've got some extras, but I'll uh, hand over David to you, Councillor Lister. Yeah, I mean, I mean firstly, thanks, uh, Eric. This is Councillor uh, David Lister, I'm the uh, Vice Chair of the Planning and Highways. As first, thanks for, for turning out and giving up your time. Uh, so just in regards of the process going forwards, um, there's a series of documents clearly which haven't been uploaded yet. Just to save me and others trying to review the evidence base on a daily basis, trying to work out when they will be uploaded. Can you give some guidance about what the process will be? Will they all be uploaded on the 6th of January or will we expect them to be gradually uploaded between today and the and the consultation period on the sixth. Yeah, it's the it's the latter really. And um, the doc the, the the team are proofreading and sense checking the documents as they're ready. They'll be uploaded. Some documents we're still waiting. Uh, some technical appendices from consultants when they're when they're completed, they'll be uploaded. The, but they will be uploaded prior to the consultation beginning on the sixth of January. Okay, okay. Can I just follow up? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, so, so is it fair to assume that the documents which are uploaded? are now stable, i.e. they won't be edited between now and the 6th of January. So uh, if I refer yes. to a document today, can I be sure that it will be the same document come the 6th of January if I take it from the evidence database that's already been published? It should be, but I can go back and check that with the team. 
Yeah. Could I say, if, if, there, if there are changes necessary, there will be editorial rather than changes of substance. So if, it may be, it may result in a page numbering change, but it won't result in a change in our thinking, presumably. Yeah, and that's it. And thank you for that, Chair. That clarification that's the critical thing there there'll be no changes no significant changes to those documents um which will have a significant impact on the local plan document because that would materially change it from what was considered at council okay okay but things might it's, it's one of the things which that i'm particularly interested in is the infrastructure delivery plan the idp um can we assume that that now is a stable document with i in a stable in the sense that the numbers for example which are in the appendix for that document will not change or do you anticipate that those numbers change i the allocation of funding towards infrastructure projects is that a significant change or a insignificant change um, well, the IDP is a living document, so just to be clear on that, it does change and update as we go through the whole process, uh, because things will drop in and drop out, and, and consultees will advise on different requirements over time as well. So it's very much a living document, so that's the first point. My understanding is the IDP was updated in November, the version that's online. So my understanding is it won't be updated any further, but I can certainly, again, take that away and ask for clarification from the team. The critical thing is, from the 6th of January, those will be the fixed documents. So from the 6th of January, those will be the documents which the consultation will be will be led from. Understood. Yeah, I understand from the 6th of January, everything would be stable. I'm just trying to see how we can best use our time. Yeah, sure that finally, given that things may change. So we don't waste our Christmas break. <laughs> exactly. Okay, um, Andy. Uh, I'll, I'll pause for now. Thanks, Eric. Any other uh, questions? Uh, Let's come back. No. Uh, uh, Councillor Woodard. Yeah, this is presentation purely about question and answer on the process. Mm, no, it, it can cover the principles. We don't want to get... It, it, we don't, probably um, Mr Owens isn't, isn't in the position to answer detailed questions if you sort of say page so-and-so, particularly if it's not the main document. But yeah, it, it covers the... The principles, particularly for Northeast Section as well. I, I was going in for a bit more detail, but yeah. I'll hold back if we're going to go yeah. through. Okay. If you could go ahead now. Well, residents are very concerned that this proposed development of Northeast Thatcham is is quite a, a away from the railway station, and currently the railway station has only a small capacity for parking. Uh, it's just mm -hmm. one of many many uh, issues raised. Do we have an answer for that at the moment? <clears throat> Sorry. Did you catch that uh, about yeah. the parking at the station and then the the sort of uh, the transport between the site and the station in particular? Yeah, I mean, I hadn't heard of that particular mm -hmm. issue before. Um, it should be picked up through the transport assessment work and the travel options set within it in yes. terms of the, the the allocation. I think there's two issues here. One is the allocation of the site overall. Uh, and the second will be, and there's a lot more detail below that allocation that would be taken forward following the, uh, well, assuming the plan is taken forward and adopted after the examination process, the applicants would have to work up a lot more detail about how the practicality of how those connections would work. Yeah. So uh, there'll be a lot more detail moving forward if that site is allocated and the plan is adopted. And Chairman. Okay, yeah. Also, residents have raised with me the fact that they feel currently Thatcham Town Centre is pretty full when they come in and there's less and less areas to park. Uh, and they're worried that such a, a large uh, development uh, in the northeast Thatcham is where people are less likely to walk into town mm. and would bring the car, which we don't really want. So there is a lack of capacity for extra parking. Um, in the town centre, even now, you drive in and it's it's pretty pretty full. I, I, I chair to yourself. I, I, well, I welcome the comments, and this is when I'd like to plug the the other piece of work that one of my teams are doing around the uh, the Thatcham um, strategy, looking at the town centre and the future of the town centre car park, mm -hmm. and that is out to consultation at the moment, um, and will be closing in early January. And that's part of the the work led by the economy team. And that will be one of the issues that they'll need to grapple with and consider. So any comments and any thoughts of how people can travel into the town centre by means other than the car, do that 
safely and do that easily. Plus the shopping and the offer of the town centre to make sure it continues to be attractive. Um, and also the community facilities across the town centre. Very much welcome thoughts and comments from yourselves and others in that process, because that's a, that's a, an adjacent stream of work that we're, I'm very interested in progressing with the team. Thank you. Just a clarification. I think at the moment it's, it's requesting comments rather than the consultation. It's a very uh, it's an early stage. There's not a proposal against which we're commenting. Against which, yeah, we're, yeah. that's right. Yep, they're asking for the comments and thoughts about yeah. the issues around right. that. Yeah, that's the Woodhams again. Finally, Chairman, are we absolutely satisfied that we've decided that there are no brownfield sites uh, around this area or even slightly beyond, if you like? Uh, that are preferred rather than a, a greenfield site on the outskirts of a town. Well, I, I think my comment around that would be that, uh, that there has been site selection process going through. There has been a call for sites, which we call a technical issue, a technical approach, which we call a call for sites, where we've invited um, um, individuals, third parties, developers, land promoters to, to submit sites into the process. Um, those sites have been assessed as part of the process uh, and as a, you know the consequence of that or the outcome of that is the allocated sites that are proposed across the plan and not just Thatcham but the other sites across that and those assessments are uh, will be part of the evidence base for for um, yourselves and others to consider so the short answer is yes consideration has been given to brownfield sites and other sites that have been promoted by others uh, during the planning process could I come back to that? Because there's one specific site which I think was first raised, at least to my knowledge, during the Regulation 18 consultation, which was the former um, bowling alley on Lower Way, uh, which is a, would be a brownfield site. I think it's currently redundant. Uh, I don't think it's got into the local into the local plan. It has presumably the HELA is not yet published, but it's a bit difficult to know if the HELA hasn't been if, if it's. If it's not in the local plan as a policy, then presumably it can't be in the HELA. But um, so that was one that, from, from a Thatcher perspective, seemed to um, at least offer potential. I'm not going to give an opinion for the council on what our view would be, but it seemed to be something which was worthy of consideration that doesn't appear to, doesn't appear, I haven't gone, I have to admit, I haven't done the word search through the 3,000 odd pages of the evidence base yet to see the response, but um, uh, that was one that seemed to be as a, a significant uh, element of brownfield sites. Um, of course, there's also the um, uh, the uh, one, the Colthrop, which uh, I know you, you have excluded for other reasons, but that that was also a brownfield site. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Councillor Lister again. Yeah, uh, apologies for coming back. Edgar, if you don't mind, can I just pick up something that you said at the beginning in the introduction, which is about the housing number? Uh, so you, you mentioned the total has come down from 22,500 to um, to 1,500 because the initial allocation was outside the period. The previous regulation 18 local plan was to, from 2020 to 2037, so it was a 17 year period. And the new proposed local plan regulation 19 is from 2022 to 2039. So again, it's a 17 year period. Now in the Reg 18, it was stated that within the, seven, within the plan period, i.e. within that 17 year period, there would be 1,250 houses coming forwards. The new regulation 19 is saying that in the plan period, there'll be 1,500 houses coming forward. So the number of houses within the comparable period is increasing. So, you know, but firstly, I was wondering, I've got two questions. So first, I was wondering if you just, could just come back to explain why the number of houses is actually increasing with regulation 19, uh, given, that, given the feedback you have from the regulation 18 process. And then secondly, my second question is about viability of the whole plan. Now, it's really difficult to make, make an assessment at the moment because I understand that that viability plan hasn't been published or issued or submitted yet. So it's not on the, on the evidence base. And when, this, when there was a viability study for Reg 18, that already looked marginal for certain aspects. So for example, the funding for the secondary school was not being proposed until phase four of the plan, which would have taken 2,000 houses before the secondary school would have been funded. And even at that level, it would have only funded 50% of the secondary school. So it's, 
And then my second question, therefore, is with the increased level of housing, yet there being no viability plan being published, what confidence do you have that the viability plan, when it comes back from your consultants, can say that this is actually a viable plan for the funding of the school? So there are the two questions. Firstly, why is the housing number going up? And I just don't understand the process of how a bank could come forward without having a viable plan in place, because it seems to be the chicken before the egg. I'd have thought you'd have been confident that the plan is viable before going to consultation, and that seems to be missing. Okay, so, so last point, we're not at consultation yet. So um, I'll deal with the viability element first. So the, the whole plan viability has been assessed. The consultants have come back and confirmed that the plan remains viable. But the, the, the appendices are being updated at the moment because there's so many, so many scenarios which the, the viability plan deals with. It takes a long time to work them back through. Um, but the advice from the viability consultants is there'd be no significant change from that as previous assess, like therefore the plan is considered to be viable. Um, so that gave officers the confidence to move forward uh, with the position that was taken to council. In terms of the actual delivery of the secondary school, what is proposed now through, and it's contained, I think, within the policy, uh, is a, a focus on the delivery of the land for the secondary school and a recognition that the second school would be funded by other sources um, than purely this uh, site itself, because it, this site was never was never intended to fully fund the secondary school. But it's a recognition that if a, if a secondary school is required, and bear in mind a lot can change in education policy between now and the need for, or when the need would be for a secondary school to be triggered, um, there is land available for it and a funding strategy will be developed as part of not just the planning process, but also part of engagement with education colleagues. Yeah, could, um, I follow, could I follow up on that? Because if I recall correctly, the Regulation 18 was talking about a three-form entry secondary school, which is uh, subscale, subsize anyway. Uh, and if we're going down to 1,500 houses, that's two forms. Um, now, the uh, Kennett School is already uh, at full capacity on a very constrained site, so it couldn't expand to take uh, uh, two forms of extra entry, um, and therefore the only solution is likely to be to move the school in its entirety to the new site, and the policy doesn't, it says that land is available, but it suggests that only, land is only available for the form, the two forms that will be generated by that site. So it seems that we don't have a viable solution for secondary education in Thatcham uh, as part of this plan. Obviously, you might not be able to answer that, but that is, seems to is a major concern um, for the town councillors, one of whom has uh, is in fact the chair of the uh, the board of Kennett School. Uh, okay. we, we don't we don't see a viable solution for secondary education as part of for for, for this site as part of the plan unless unless that land is for the whole of the, um, the secondary school, which would, of course, release land uh, in, in closer to the town. Well, I think that's a, that's a point that you need to take up through your Regulation 19 submission and put it into the inspector. I think you can be confident of that point. <laughs> yeah. But, Jack, I just want to answer yeah. Yeah. the question about why is the housing increase? Yes, yeah. so, why is not What's the rationale behind the number within the, the first 17 year period increasing? Could I, before we go to that, I've, I've got a, a sort of related question that the, the policy SP 17 in the, in the regulation 18 was quite brief compared to other policies for much smaller sites. But the, the new policy has lots of statements about new strategies and policies which will need to be developed and indeed a new master plan before development could start. Uh, and indeed, uh, also that uh, thinking about what was discussed in Bucklebury, um, no work, it, it appears that no progress has been made on checking the, uh, the timescales for, for availability of uh, fresh water and drainage to be provided. Uh, and if, until those are provided, um, the development, well, they can start building the houses, but they can't be occupied. So um, not only is the number increased, but it appears that the amount of work needed to, to, to be completed in the plan before development could start has also increased, which will reduce the time in practice for delivery. 
So are you able to reconcile those two, two, two opposing trends? I, I don't see a major conflict there, if I'm honest, Chair. I mean, I've dealt with a, a great number of strategic sites over my time, and it's not unusual that local planning authorities will ask for additional information to give greater clarity to both the, the, the local community and the planning authority as, as sites are taken forward into the application stage. Developers have the ability to accelerate that by um, by different means um, and linked into the infrastructure and the provision infrastructure. The onus is on them to work with us, but mainly them to work with the water companies to get the suitable water and drainage connections connected up to to fit in with their um, occupation mm. triggers. Uh, and my experience is that there can be some delay around that, but normally it doesn't stop development coming forward in terms of the overall process. So I'm not overly concerned by what the plans. Is. If anything, it gives greater comfort in terms of there'll be greater detail before a planning application will come in, and a great uh, number of those strategies will require a degree of consultation and engagement with the local community. So then again, are there again giving greater involvement with the local community in terms of what happens on that site? Yeah, I just comment there that there's there's no constraint whatsoever on when a planning application will come in. And uh, the experience of Sandalford is that um, the uh, non-compliance with the, poli the strategic policies is no barrier, no obstacle to uh, a developer progressing a, a plan, uh, a proposal, even for part of the site, which is a worry as well. I can't, I can't speak for developers, but I would always say that it's best to work with the local plan authority and the local community. Mm -hmm to smooth the process of submitting planning applications because ultimately it reduces the, the the amount of work once an application has been submitted. Mm. Can, I, again. can I come Thanks. back in housing numbers yeah. for Councillor yeah, Lister? Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. uh, my, my understanding is because the plan period has been pushed out, the housing requirement still sits there. So you've we've lost those two years, even though the plan period moves out. So my understanding is it's a roll up of the numbers. Um, but again, that's a, quite a technical issue and I can get uh, one of my colleagues to come back with that answer uh, ready for our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Woodhams. Are you therefore taking into consideration any windfall sites that may come up before the uh, the development would take place or the numbers agreed, shall we say? Well, there's an, an annual windfall allowance that's taken account of in our housing numbers anyway. That annual housing, that windfall allowance continues through through the process. So I wouldn't say the windfall allowance is directly impacting the, the site numbers in this case. Rest I just wondered if, if we're seeing windfall sites coming forward, that the numbers would decrease. No. They wouldn't. No. Right. Thank you. Perhaps I would you mind it? Yeah. Chair, could be the privilege of one further question. Um, because it, I, th I think this is quite an important one because the local plan is about a spatial strategy and one of the key challenges with the whole site area is that it's very little flat land uh, and clearly some of that flat land is going to be required for a secondary school and the other uh, aspect is uh, for playing fields and recreation and in the regulation 18 TSGS Space Action Strategic Growth Study it identified an, a demand at least it was stated in the TSGS that identifies a demand for seven hectares uh, related to playing fields. Now, that I assume was with 2,500 houses, so that would drop by 60% to 4.2 hectares uh, with the reduced allocation mm -hmm. of uh, 1,500 houses. So the, the, the question, therefore, is does the plan have an allocation of 4.2 hectares of playing fields in relation to the plan that's now coming forward with the increased uh, rate of housing? That's a bit too detailed for me, I'm afraid. I'd have to take that one away. Thank you. And, and another comment I'll just make at that point is that the flatland closest to the A4 is bisected by an oil pipeline, uh, which uh, has, well, no building can be built over it. And I gather that the uh, pipeline operators are reluctant even to put a car park over it in the context of Henick Worthy. So uh, the usage of that flatland uh, is quite limited. Um, they even were worried about a, an artificial pitch, which would cause problems about the hectares of rec recreational space. Um, so um, 
I, 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 would you be happy to answer a few questions from the members of the public who are uh, who are here to, uh, uh, to, to 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 attend the meeting? Uh, if I'm able to answer them, okay. yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, before, before I do, I'll ask one one question because with uh, impeccably bad timing, uh, the Secretary of State uh, has announced uh, a the intention to radically change the policy in relation to um, uh, housing allocation. Uh, so are you able to say if and how, if that will have any impact on the progression of the Regulation 19, and if so, how? Yes, yeah, so we released a press statement on that on Friday afternoon. We, we, read, we read the Secretary of State's announcement mm. with, with, well, with, with <laughs> uh, yeah. We, 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 um, mm. We read the read them in great depth and consideration. To be fair, um, mm. I, I think our, our view would be that uh, the Secretary of State's position um, supports what we've done, and we and we therefore mm. think that the plan should still continue on the path it has. Um, we have, as a council, and this is speaking well before my time, we have um, a had a consistently. We've kept our housing numbers either consistent or slightly lowered them over time since the early 2000s, whereas we've noticed other Berkshire authorities' housing numbers have significantly increased in some instances. And we've taken a constraint-based, landscape-led approach. So the local plan, as it's as it was put to council, is very much focused around the areas where development can take place and very much uh, identifies the sensitivities of how that development can be integrated into the surrounding landscape. So in terms of dis uh, mandatory or discretionary housing numbers or advisory, I think the term is, we're, we've given advice to the administration that we think that our housing, there's still a logic to how our housing numbers have been made. That logic is based on housing need and the spatial arrangement and location for those housing sites. Again, there's a logic to how they've been um, they've been uh, determined and identified. I'm sure others will have a different view, but we, we're confident in terms of our approach can align with what the Secretary of State has proposed. Uh, and obviously that will be for the inspector to consider should, um, and as moving forward through into the Regulation 19 stage. Yeah. Uh, I believe that the Secretary of State wrote a letter to local authorities. Um, I've seen the letter that he sent to MPs in the press release, but it would be helpful if it's possible to make that the letter that you receive public if it's not confidential uh, so that we can have direct 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 knowledge of it i'll certainly look look out thank you. Yeah. yeah thank you so if there are any members of the public would like to ask any additional questions or have you been you've asked them okay i, I gather that we've we've been thorough enough so um is there any final questions from uh, other councillors which minds, yes. Chair Eric, if, if you don't mind, what, what one thing that's puzzling me, and it goes back to this playing field thing, I know you, you can't answer that directly, but uh, one of the reasons why I asked that question is because within the policy of SP17, it talks about using the principles outlined in the TSGS, the Fashion Strategic Growth Study. Now, I can't find what those principles are within the TSGS. I mean, the, the, the mm. principles are in the eye of the beholder. You could take any sort of section within there and say there's a principle, mm. but there's not. A, there's not a section I don't believe, unless you can tell me otherwise, which are the key principles. And therefore, what I really struggle with is that in the policy it refers to a document where I should find principles. That document's been designed for 2,500 houses. It includes statements such as the demand for the requirement of the playing fields for seven hectares. So, is that a principle? Is that a principle requirement for the policy? And I, I struggle to understand what the legal framework is now for referring to a document which doesn't align with either the plan or the housing allocation that is the core part of the policy. And therefore, you know, there's other aspects. You know, there's a viability plan within TSGS. Um, is that a principle of the, of the policy? Or will the new viability study that come out um, subsume that? Will it take it over? Will it take precedence? So I was just wondering, finally, if you could give me some guidance of how we should interpret the policy and the guiding principles that are stated in the policy to TSGS, and how much weight should we give to those, given that I can't find what those, what those principles are? Thank you. 
Councillor, so that's another good detailed question. I'll defer to my learned colleagues. Um, All right, understood. I'll take that back. I mean, uh, and I'll, I'll raise that with them. And again, we can we can provide this in writing to you to help inform your position yeah. prior to us meeting again. Thank you. And I've just realised I'm looking at you on the screen and you're not um, <laughs> on camera, so apologies for that. No, that's fine. Thank you. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to turn it back to you. So, Councillor Woodham, from now. Thank you. Um, I did read in a previous document that Henick Sports Ground was considered uh, to be uh, available uh, if the, the ground, which slopes incredibly at North East Thatcham, you've probably seen it, was not suitable. Is that still the case? I can tell you now that Henick Sports Ground is rather full and the parking in the area is overflowing. Have you an update on that? Um, I don't have an update on that, I'm afraid, Councillor, no. I, I think I, I can answer that. I think there's a, there was a sort of chain of misunderstanding between various documents, Good um, but I, I can explain offline. I've got one point. I won't, I won't expect you to answer it, but um, the, stuff, the supporting text for the Thatcham uh, policy, SP17, says that there's a, a, a general short lack of infrastructure in, in the town, and this... Uh, policy will only um, address uh, the needs of the, 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 the new residents in the, in the development. And um, one of the things that's already been identified by Hemingway is that uh, the opportunities in the space that's available for any uh, remedying shortage of infrastructure in the town centre is very limited. And the, probably the only site is Walnut Close, which is the um, dis, now disused um, uh, uh, care home, uh, and but there's no indication of uh, that how that will be used, and particularly whether it will become available for, for, for overcoming the shortfall in infrastructure. So um, obviously that's not directly related to the plan, uh, but it's it's certainly very directly really related to the reassurance of residents. So I don't, I'm not expecting an answer, but if you could sort of um, bear that in mind in in future thinking, that would be very helpful. No, I mean, and a useful point, and a point mm. that has hasn't been isn't lost on me because I, I was aware of uh, constraint issues within the town centre. Yeah. And, and I think it comes back to that's why we're doing the Hemingway's work to yeah. try and pull that out and identify that. That may lead to further potential further investment the council may wish to consider, and perhaps in partnership with the town council. So mm. again, this is the purpose of doing that wider piece of master planning around the town centre and try and understand what the future looks like for that area and how how we can take that forward as part of an integrated piece. Okay, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure if Hemingway were clear on the extent to which they, the sort of investment that would be involved in that redevelopment was, was within their brief. So um, that may not come out. It certainly wasn't in the... It was only very obliquely mentioned in the, in the, in the online survey. Uh, if you didn't know already what it was asking, you wouldn't have known how to answer it. Uh, so perhaps that's something that could be clarified with Hemingway. If that is part of their remit, that would be very helpful. We can certainly take that away. But I'm Thank sure you. I'm <laughs> sure you'll be engaging with Hemingway's as well to make the point. Well, yeah, that, actually, thank you. That's another point I'll say that we've been uh, very uh, pleased with the extent of the engagement of Hemingway with the council so far. Obviously, it's still at an early stage. Some of your previous consultants were a little more reluctant to um, engage with the council. Um, so one, one member of the, uh, 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 can I just go to Councillor Crumley, then I noticed that a member of the public has, has come uh, thought of a question. Uh, yes, yes, hello, it's uh, Richard Crumley, one of the town council members. Is there any, um, with these 1,200 houses, is there any provision at present as planned for any uh, retail development to be included in, in or on the, 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 the site? Um. I, 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 there is some mention, but it's a bit clear, unclear as to whether it's retail or something else. But um, there is a, a, a section, there is a provision of a certain book, uh, floor area for particular categories of planning application, which yeah. those categories include retail, but it's not explicit, I think. Yeah, uh, the envisage would be a small you know, neighbourhood type shops looking at the size of the 1100 square yeah. metres. So neighbourhood type shops by the looks of it. Yeah, because the existing... Uh, neighbourhood shops in, in Thatcham are not close to that uh, that end of the town, so that's particularly mm. important. So I've got one question, one, one final question from a member of the public before we uh, say thanks to. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, in relation to 
the section 106 or contributions and, and, the, and the projects that that, that, that those, those contributions would go to um are is it the plan that those go to the communal facilities within the proposed development site in northeast Natchum? Uh, i understand there's a hemingway um review of the needs of the town center but where do the improvements and the funds come from for improvements to other parts of Thatcham, Thatcham Town in its entirety. There's plenty of areas for opportunity within the within Thatcham, not just the town centre, and links from the new site to the town and the station. Um, is it the is it the section uh, 106 contributions that would be at the discretion of West Berkshire Council as to where they're spent to improve the improve Thatcham um, from the from the development of the northeast Thatcham site. Did you catch that? Yes, yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it's a fairly complicated area, but in essence, the development should be contributing towards mitigating its impacts. So uh, any impacts that the development has, it should mitigate either through cell contributions or section 106 contributions. Uh, you know, and a good example is um, the schools, uh, the GP surgery, the shops, uh, all those were required to be tied up through a legal agreement to make sure they do happen and happen at a certain point in development. Um, if there's wider impacts across the town centre and across the town, they would have to be specifically evidenced. And then again, if they're evidenced and they could be um, properly defined, they would be tied into either legal agreement or contribution secured through the cell process. If there's wider requirements needed in the town, like which this development can't pay towards, this is where the master planning work becomes really important for us collectively because it would give a a list of infrastructure asks and also a funding strategy to try and deliver that improved ask. And that could be, you know, bidding into the, the wider cell funds that the town council has or the wider cell, fund, cell funds that the, um, the um, West Berkshire has, or indeed looking for funding opportunities to go into government for different funding streams. So that funding strategy tied to the infrastructure ask from the Hemingway work is really important. And that's the work that we're doing in, in, um, in Newbury now. So we've done part of that work. The Newbury Town Centre Master Plan has pulled out a, a list of infrastructure asks and a funding strategy to, to, to try and secure it. And we have been successful in securing, I think it's around about 600,000 towards an area of the town right around the wharfs from the UK Cheer Prosperity Fund, which has just recently been confirmed to the council. So the key thing here is getting the evidence there and identifying where it can be funded from. And then our approach um, moving forward will be to work closely with yourselves and the community to deliver that funding uh, and those infrastructure improvements. Sorry, thank you very much. Um, just very quick follow up. Does the Hemingway perimeter of their area of study, does, is that only the Thatcham Town Thatcham Town Centre or is it the whole, with, the whole of Thatcham? Well, shall I answer that? Because I've got the, I, I know the map. It is, it is the, it's basically it's the periphery of business premises in the town centre. Uh, so the Hemingway study is funded by the economic development team in West Berkshire Council, and that was the boundary. Uh, the map is, we can show you that we can go the map offline uh, because that's was, was, I think it's, it's a document from previous council meeting. So the concern would be all the areas outside the yeah. Hemingway town centre yeah. so that's basically the rest of the residential patch as it were is not part of any improvement um it's not part of any formal study at the moment i think is the answer that's, that's, that's right yeah that's right okay well thank you very much if um no last minute questions um that's been very helpful uh i i i, I get the impression that you and your team are still very busy that the first of december wasn't the end of your work so we look forward to uh I guess it might be, it might be more that the meeting in January might be one of your team who's more familiar with the details that we've highlighted rather than yourself. But anyway, we'll welcome somebody back in January. And thank you very much for your time. And also for Rowan, who has probably been sort of kept, kept keeping keeping up with things. And uh, we'll, we'll be engaging with him, as I guess, as well. Yeah. So thank you very much. Many thanks. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Thanks, then. Good night. Thank you. So, oh, thank you, thank you.
We, we, we still have two, two more agenda items relating to uh, cold ash, but I suspect you'll probably be discussing those in your uh, yourselves as well. So, thank you. Thank you. So, <clears throat> we move on to uh, agenda item six, uh, which is uh, Lawrence's. Uh, Lawrence's lane is a popular topic this meeting. So, the first item is the prohibition of motor vehicles experimental order. Uh, and to receive and consider that the statutory six month consultation regarding the implementation of a prohibition of motor vehicles, experimental order restricting motor vehicles by Lawrence of Dane is due to close on Thursday, the, th the 19th of January, uh, which is after our next meeting. So the question uh, we asked if we asked if we, if we wish to respond to that consultation. So would you like to add anything to that? Or is that... Um, that's pretty much it. It's right. from, um... Yeah, if everyone has any feedback and wants to consider uh, it at the next meeting. Uh, we, we did um we, we did respond in support of the uh well we didn't uh, well, we responded in support of the uh original plan for active travel. Uh, I can't remember if we responded before the formal consultation on the TRO, but anyway, um I suggest that we that uh, I'll, I'll work on that offline uh, and bring a, pa a paper to the next meeting. Um uh so is it, yeah, so if that's, if that's I propose that we, we we do we do respond, and I will uh, lead in writing the text, Councillor Crumley. Uh, yes, I think we should uh, respond. We don't tell me with the the day closing date down here is still given as the nineteenth yeah. of uh, January. What are you looking for then? Are you going to prepare something and hope? That I'm going to prepare something, and yeah, I, we've got plenty of time, so I should be able to circulate that with the agenda for the meeting, so we can have comments on that. I just have just what one. Yeah. One point which yeah. I've been opposed to this yeah. from the, the start. So you might want to or might not, of course, want to incorporate it. But to me, this could be a valuable relief road, uh, full of road traffic if roads either side, Cold Ash Hill and uh, Half, Half Hill Lane yeah. were, were to be closed. So it would be better for me for it to be open so that it's available if and when uh, required. They talk about it being a a valuable walking space. I mean, I've walked up and down it, and it's not a, to me, an attractive walking space. <laughs> so not a little unpleasant, uh, flooded, and uh, not not a great place to, uh, uh, to to walk. So that that's my view on it. We should leave it uh, leave it open. Yes, I'll come to. Uh, we'll come. Uh, I'll ask you later. So, uh, Councillor Lister might be. I suspect might be. Uh, I, 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 yeah. just to um, add some balance, Chair, I have concluded the, the count of you to, to yeah. the uh, Council of Criminals mm -hmm. Inspector. Uh, I regularly walk up that mm -hmm. uh, lane. Um, I do that for recreational purposes, for exercise. I know many people who do uh, who live, mm -hmm. who live surrounding my immediate uh, vicinity, mm -hmm. and my streets. It's a highly, highly cherished uh, local mm -hmm. lane. Not only do we use it for exercise, for walking, it's also the main route into the uh, the the Mesho public footpaths and the A and B in Buckleberry, and it's also a very popular cycling route. Mm. Um, and the number of times I've gone up there, either as a pedestrian or as a cyclist, uh, and come across vehicles mm. uh, before the uh, bollards were put in, uh, were, were very high and, and quite worrying. Mm. Uh, and it's concerned when you have families with mothers pushing the, the kids in the in, in the push mm. chairs, and there's no room yeah. for a vehicle and and a push chair. Mm. It's absolutely crazy, and you know, to have it open as a two-way road, um, you know, it's just a recipe for, for disaster, to be honest, and surprised there haven't been many more injuries already. So I have an exact uh, opposite view as uh, Councillor Crumley, I'd like that to be reflected um, if you consider that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as we've moved on to a formal business rather than just a discussion, I, I need at this point to propose that we uh, invite members of the public to, to speak. Uh, is there a seconder for that? Thank you. And those in favour of inviting members of the public to speak. So, would you like now to? Uh, you have one. Uh, I just wanted to agree that since um, bollards were put in, they have been removed mm -hmm. and not replaced. And I walked down there today and was followed down by a vehicle that obviously still decided mm -hmm. to yeah. use the road. Yeah. Okay. In fact, I think that the signage is less clear now because they've removed the notice that said it was a single track road without passing places, um, which was there before, but now it just says it's an open road, but uh, people um, 
people try. And I think the problem we have is that um, it's, 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 it's recommended on sat navs and some people don't know what to do if, they're, if they find a, uh, a difference between the sat nav and what's there on the ground. So anyway, so that will be, uh, I, I, if we can agree to my proposal that we, uh, that I develop a, 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 rec a document for consideration for approval as our next meeting. Is there a second for that? Would you like, I mean, there's yeah. two different proposals yeah. here. But minority report. <laughs> but, yeah, minority report. Report. but would you like a, a formal proposal for myself, which is seconded, oh. to give you direction about... Okay, yeah. Okay. I think Council Crumley might want to do the okay, same. Okay, that would be a good idea. A good idea, yeah. yes. So, so I'd like to propose that we support the prohibition of motor vehicles mm. for the reason that I outlined in my opening remarks. Second it. And those in favour of whether well, you want to, I think it's fine. What, 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 so, 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 so I'm, I'm suggesting that the chair proposes a response yeah. that is supporting the prohibition of motor vehicles. Yeah. 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 I thought we were allowing a minority report. Well, uh, I think it might, well, I think there's going to be two positions. Yeah. The chair's going to have to uh, have comments that reflect. Yeah, sure. Sure. No, yeah. the majority say this yeah. as a minority and saying that. Okay, yeah, I'd be trumped. And any, 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 uh, well, of course, if, uh, I think it has to be normally a, a council of the majority view is what, what prevails in the report, and uh, the, the, any any person can comment. So if you were, oh, sure, sure. Um, I suspect, put, my own, uh, put your own response in, yes. So, going to do a vote yeah, on. You know, the, the proposal, as, as you've got the note of what Council Lister said, <laughs> her response supporting the, the continued, uh, the continuation of the uh, TRO. Yeah. Those of the vote. Those in favour of that. Yeah. Those in fa against that. <laughs> yeah, yes. Thank you. So that's uh, that will come back to the next meeting. Um, so item seven, uh, cyclist and viability issues. Madam Clark, would you, Deputy Clark, would you like to? Uh, this is probably something that you have um, information on. Yes. So if you recall, um, I think it was at the meeting of the 11th of October, um, which was to introduce mm. uh, the cycle, um, um, mm. I think it was St John's Road. Yeah, yeah. yeah. St John's Road. So um, contacted West Berkshire Council with some of the comments that uh, members uh, raised and uh, I've had a response back um, with regards to the cycling on the pavements on the A4. Um, uh, so it's up on the screen. Mm. Did you get a copy as well to the review? I've got it here. Yes, yeah. 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 So um, they've come back and said, we note that members of the public express concern about preserving life of cyclists when cycling on pavements and going straight across junctions. It's useful to understand how members of the public expressed this view at that committee session. And of these, how many were cyclists and how many were pedestrians? Um, as stated on our website, cycling on footways, including cross bridges, is not allowed unless the footway is designated as a shared facility for both cyclists and pedestrians to use. Suitable signs have previously been installed to sign poles and lamp columns along the A4 bordering on the carriageway, cycle lanes and adjoining shared sections of the park. Like the above, we have no present plans to install additional shared route or similar signs on the footways. Um, we note the public comment that uh, you report that from the cyclist's point of view, the cyclist station when being passed by HGVs on the busy A4. Um, this highlights the competing demands for road space along the A4 on its route through the faction and underlines the issues involved in, involved in balancing access to and through that mm -hmm. including manufacturing and other employment sites adjoining the town. Um, West Yorkshire Council has sought to further reduce the risk by extending the 30 mile an hour speed limit on the A4 to cover the urban section of Thatcham where it is for the wild properties. Um, they've also drawn our attention to um, the hierarchy of the road mm. users guide um, issued by the government this year. Um, I think um, just kind of brief, inter interject there. Um, my recollection of the um, the discussions on the traffic regulation order to extend the thirty mile an hour limit wasn't was not anything but the council sort of seeking to do it. I think the council was 
pressed into doing it through uh, um, continued lobbying by West Berkshire councillors and others. Um, they didn't actively propose it, if I recall. That's correct, Councillor Woodham, doesn't it? <laughs> I, I believe your memory is correct. <laughs> um, and understated. Of course. And then we go on to yeah. discuss uh, vehicles that came from St John's Road, um, about the concerns raised. Um, since the junction layouts existed for many years with long established private property walls closely bordering both junctions, pedestrians and cyclists are users at the top of the hierarchy of road users referred to above. It remains the responsibility of drivers to be considerate, pay due care and attempt from when entering and exiting from this and other junctions. The comments made again highlight competing demands for road space along the established A4 free thatching. Demands such as that for on street parking have increased in recent decades, in turn giving rise to issues with visibility and access that did not previously exist. This gives rise to the question whether some journeys, in particular over shorter distances, could be made by alternative modes such as walking, cycling, or bus. Okay, so I think that's saying that if the public did, the, if the public didn't cause a problem, there wouldn't be a problem. Um, but by not driving, um, I look forward with interest to see how how, how they're going to uh, encourage that. Councillor Crumley, um, just a couple a couple of points. Um, uh, uh, I just say the, the road the A4 is pretty uh, pretty wide at this uh, at this point on the exits uh, opposite uh, St John's Road. Um, I mean, it's just a very tricky. Um, uh, spot if you're exiting at either end of St John's Road, whether you're a cyclist or indeed any other form of road uh, user. When I was reading this to, tonight, I thought, well, one way of trying to reduce the problem is to um, introduce a rule saying to, if you're exiting St John's Road, you can only turn left, not turn across the um, ongoing traffic. That would reduce um, the, the danger for cyclists and indeed motorists uh, exiting. Uh, the roadway. I emphasise it again, as I have in the past, that it's uh, illegal to ride a uh, cycle on the uh, uh, on the footpath, and uh, they should therefore stick to the road. I think they have a um, uh, um, they're strict uh, designated uh, for them, so they should um, so they should use it. This is simply a, a tricky bit of road, and everybody needs to be. Uh, it needs to be careful. I don't think there's any quick uh, fix uh, to this. But what, what one way would be to, to stop the, um, those uh, using St John's Road for next thing in turn. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely, Crop. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I mean, I, I agree with much of what Councillor Crumley says, and indeed, well, uh, what the uh, officers have, have stated there. Um, we, uh, as a, a councillor for that area, I've received a number of comments from local residents who have concerns about various aspects of the St John's Road area. Um, they are narrow roads, they are old roads, and a lot of infill development has gone on there, which hasn't taken proper account of visibility, parking, mm -hmm. um, stowing of bins and all sorts of things. So uh, I think there are, there are a number of complications with that area, which uh, in due course will require a, a, a proper review of the area. But uh, I think in the meantime, everybody does have to uh, proceed with care when they're traveling around um, those junctions and uh, interacting with the A4. Uh, just uh, going back to the first point, I just checked at the West Berkshire online map. I think we did this previously and that's, shows that the footway is designated, if you zoom in, is designated as shared use, but the cycle tracks on the road, on the carriageway are not shown. So I'm not quite sure what, what is designated and what isn't. <laughs> Follow that one up. So, um, um, do you want to go on to Crown? Yes, so I think they, um... Just drew to our attention again the fact that we had consultation with regards to the Crown Meads uh, scheme for mm. um, this cycling, mm. proposed cycling, and so forth. Um, so they have said that they are happy uh, to meet with a councillor mm. at St John's Junction mm. if anyone would wish to um, take them mm. up on that to discuss 
issues and so forth. And I had a conversation with um, a resident who has an, an e-bike, which is two wheels at the front. And they said that uh, some of the drop curbs are impossible to navigate safely because they've only been designed for a bicycle in mind. And if you go obliquely at them, which you have to in order, in order to get off the road, um, then they're not wide enough. So that's another thing we'll have to follow up. We have, in fact, mentioned that before, but it's not been actioned. Anyway, yes, yeah, so we'll have to take up that. Um, it, it, we will take up that uh, offer to meet. I think there are actually more issues that have come up since. So we probably want to get a collection of compilation of what the issues are and address them all at one site meeting. Can I put myself forward as thing to attend at Clive Toombs and happen to meet? That is one, one of more. Yeah. So we'll, yeah, we'll need to work. Sorry? We could meet a group. We could make a group. So, Councillor Williams first. Yes, Chairman, um, you may remember, and I think you very kindly came on the site visit as well between the two of us, um, that we reported uh, at a surgery where an elderly husband could no longer push his wife in a wheelchair um, on the footway which passes Highbrow Court. And I remember you saying that this could be part of the Crown Mead scheme. And here we are, I don't know, maybe a year later. Hmm. This this is a footway uh, that passes Crown Mead. Uh, which passes Wybrow Court. The cambers are there, mm. the surface uh, water, mm. the gullies are there, the drains are still there, mm. um, the drop curbs have a lip, and it's 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 impossible mm. for push chairs, so for wheelchairs to get through. Push chairs have a problem, it's an obstacle. Mm. And if it's linked to this Crown Mead scheme, it seems to be dragging on considerably. And I think it's about time. Perhaps we ought to push that this is a separate scheme if Crown Mead is such a problem. I think we need to encourage I mean, the thing to inquire is what, what is the actual time scale for implementation of the Crown Mead scheme? Mm -hmm. And then ask for a specific time scale and then we can follow up if sure. Uh, because obviously if it can be done at the same time, that will be more cost effective and, and so on. Absolutely. But it does that does seem to be eking out the time a bit too long, really. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Anything more on that? I think that is, uh, we are get back at my agenda. Um, consider a uh, response. So I don't think we're making a response. That, well, the, the response to this meeting is to inquire about the program, the, the timetable for the Crown Mead scheme and everything else yeah. will carry forward um, to, to, to bring it all together so that we'll, we'll, go, we'll respond to the meeting once we've got the... Uh, Got a complete set of issues because there have been other mm -hmm. casework and other um, comments at surgeries. Also, we'll put together a compilation of those. Yeah, and arrange but them. could you ask in the meantime what the what the time scale is being made? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, so we have uh, item eight: the adoption of the West Berkshire Minerals and Waste Local Plan. Can I, I just do this very briefly? So this is a counterpart and no, a sort of complement to the local plan for housing development. It's further ahead, it's now gone through the inquiry and uh, the inspector made a few comments of detail, nothing significant to that. And we did not comment in the to the original Regulation 18 consultation because there were no changes to the, um, the infrastructure in Thatcham. And uh, so I therefore suggest that we note that it has been uh, adopted at the low meeting on the 1st of December. Proposed noted. Thank you. Noted. Thank you. We note that. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, if anybody managed to read through this and remain conscious, then they have my, <laughs> my, my, my compliments. I mean, it was a waste plan. I did actually read, read it and respond on behalf of a different body. Thank you. Oh, yes. okay. I learned a new word for me, iterative, oh. from a couple of places. Mm -hmm. So I had to look up. So. Okay. So we come back to uh, item two of three from Lawrence's Lane, the uh, the planning inquiry. So um, I don't know how much you've heard. So uh, the uh, as you will recall from previous meetings, uh, the town council requested and was granted the status of a rule six party, uh, which effectively means that we have a comparable status to the uh, council representing the appellant and the uh, council. 
yeah, the West Berkshire Council, but uh, with a expected to have a narrower remit focusing on the specific issues. Um, so you will also then recall that we wrote a uh, statement of case and we wrote, wrote a revised, uh, sorry, proof, yes. Uh, the proof we wrote, we wrote a statement of case and then a revised statement of case and then uh, I've submitted a proof of evidence on drainage which we reviewed at the last meeting um, and um, so the inquiry started on Tuesday of last week and uh, after no opening statements uh, there was a uh, uh, councillor's lister and, and Dylan gave uh, that presented their evidence about the impact on residents, particularly at the time of the um, uh, that the site was first occupied. Um, then we then went on to uh, the, the afternoon was taken up with ecology, uh, which was a largely a discussion between experts about the um, likelihood of various protected species being present on the site, uh, which is something which I'm not particularly familiar with, and I only made a few comments to local knowledge. We then got to Wednesday morning, which was um, drainage. And you recall, I submitted a proof of evidence where based on my expertise that water flows downhill, but doesn't flow uphill. Uh -huh. And um, the, uh, the um, <clears throat> council had other concerns about the uh, evidence submitted by the, um, the, 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 the consultant on drainage. And uh, there were a number of discussions uh, between various groups of parties, between the, uh, the the residents on the site and their representatives, between the two uh, uh, council for the two main parties, um, and uh, and then a, a discussion, informal discussion with the uh, all three of the parties, that including myself, and in effect the um, the inspector suggested that the evidence was insufficient on, on drainage was insufficient for him to be likely to be able to grant an appeal disregarding all of the other factors so that it's in it he, he suggested that that in itself would make, make him unable to grant an appeal uh, and therefore the um the appellants decided to request a an adjournment and that will be to a date still to be decided in uh most likely February or March next year, there are some quite tight constraints and some challenges about finding dates when all of the parties are available. Um, and that, that means that the appellants will be liable for the extra costs for the, particularly for the consultants uh, representing the council. Uh, and it might mean extra bus fares for myself because I bought a weekly ticket. But, um, <clears throat> so that's still to be decided. Um, and uh, that will, well, that, that, that's like, that'll be scheduled for four days and it will take four days because of the way that it's timetabled that, that they have to request the experts on the different topics for a particular day so if they if they if it takes less time than expected they have to close early because the, the, the next set of experts won't be available until the day that they're scheduled so that is where we are on that uh, did you um you prepared a lot of evidence about drainage and yes. I was uh, impressed when you told us about it. Have you given that to the um to, to the to the planning inspectors? So that, and you? so that is a formal document. That is a proof of evidence, which is one of the categories of documents submitted to the to the hearing. So that's already available. Yeah. Uh, examined, cross-examined uh, about it? No, because um the the uh, inspector, we we didn't re well. We we've dis I've discussed it uh, with the the consultant informally. There was also a discussion between the three the three experts. Uh, the consultant for who the for the appellant and for the, the council. council. Uh, but but basically, we didn't reach that point before the um, inspector concluded that there was insufficient evidence. Um, there were basically the, the council had um, other concerns about the evidence, which were discussed before it got to my my. my um, by council, you mean West Barks Council, yeah. not council? Yeah, the council, the West Barks, so West Barkshire Council, the, the expert West Barkshire Council had other concerns which the inspector was uh, mindful of, and that was sufficient before we got that detailed discussion. Do you feel that the, the experts for the for West Barks Council and you as an expert are at one or converging on this, um, or pulling differently? No, I'd say that we are. Um, we we share each other we share the same views but there are reasons why um it's easier for me to say some things than, than the council to do with the process of the the um 
uh, to do with the process of the inquiry, but we're not talk we're not talking across purposes at all. This adjournment, do you feel that's favourable to uh, to us? In other words, the opponents of this uh, application, or or, or not? Um, <laughs> The adjournment gives the appellants the opportunity to reconcile other issues within their within their evidence base. So, it, in principle, it might help them if they choose to choose to follow that route. As has the issue of the um, this application being outside the settlement boundary been properly explored yet? Because that oh yeah, that, that that was one of the sessions due to that was um that was adjourned. So basically, um, once it was decided that the evidence for range had to be adjourned, then most of the other topics were interlinked in some way with that. So that it was felt that it wouldn't be appropriate to proceed with the other se sessions because they would have to be revisited in any case once a new proposal for drainage came forward. So um what people start posted then as to um the, the time so we'll have a copy of a letter saying when the next hearing will be because well uh, I, 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 I will we'll, end it again. We'll, we'll let you know the the, the 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 way that the process is going. I will probably know um in correspondence between the parties before there's anything public, but I, as soon as there's a firm date, I can let, let uh, announce that, but it probably will not be a letter as such. Mm -hmm. we'll keep, yeah, keep you informed, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Propose we note the update. Should we open it? Yeah, thank you. Um, so we move on to agenda item 10, which is normally our main topic of the meeting. <laughs> what there for? Um, and we will, <laughs> at some point in the future, we will get on to um, the th uh, Lawrence's Lane item three. Anyway, so uh, over to the deputy clerk to um, uh, to share the. Um, so first application we have tonight is um, with regards to Francis Bailey School. Um, the proposal is for the erection of. Uh, three temporary teaching blocks and three temporary toilet blocks. Um, this is the site. Um, and they are proposing locating these here on the site. Um, it's my understanding uh, that they have a couple of years in port cabins at the moment and I believe. Um, they will be moving into these temporary classrooms while they um, replace with a new building. Um, so these are the um, quarter cabins, or the temporary classrooms, sorry. Um, so it has two classrooms each. Um, <clears throat> flat roof. Um, and then they've got three toilets for male, female, and an accessible. Toilet um, to see what we're talking about. Um, I believe that it's putting it in this area here. Okay, thank you. So, um, Councillor Lister, I was going to propose no objections. I'm yeah. happy to second that. Thank you. So, uh, vote on that. All those in favour of making no objection. Thank you very much. So, item number two, eight Bollingbrook Way. So, almost me. The traditional style planning application. The back of the envelope. <laughs> yeah. So, this is a proposal for a two story side extension. Um, the property is located at the end of a cul de sac, um, just here. Um, the clerk. So the proposal is to construct um, the extension here but, and make more space by removing this garage here, which appears to be attached to this, this garage here um, to make more parking here. Mm -hmm. Um, it was understood that to shrink that down fraction. Um, 
So this is the current um, front elevation and side elevation of the property um, and the rear elevation. Um, this is the current floor plan. Um, and upstairs floor plan. I believe it's a four bedroom property, although they haven't put that in there. I'm assuming a bathroom and possibly mm -hmm. an ensuite as well. Um, I did look it up on Right Move and it was a four bedroom property. Um, this is the proposed extension. Um, so we're looking to side here. Um, two stories. Um, by putting a garage, a storeroom, downstairs cloak, and a utility with a flat roof to the rear, um, whereas the two story extension mm -hmm. will be in keeping. Um, they're looking to use similar dormer windows to the front. Um, and then they are looking to extend two bedrooms over the top with the uh, Jack and Jill en suite. Um, that's the roof plan. Now, I don't know whether members might recall this. There was a application um, back in May uh, for a hydrotherapy pool also mm -hmm. on this site mm -hmm. um, to the rear of the property. So I just thought I'd draw it to your attention to uh, keep that in mind as well. Um, so if we, uh, that was this application. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a enclosed so pool, okay. Yeah, that was the one, and well, Faction Town Council had no objections on that um, mm. application. So was the application granted? Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. Um, so just having a look at where it is, um, so it's at the end of this cul-de-sac in Bollingham. Um, it's this property in the corner here. Um, you can't actually get down to have mm. a look at the property, but it is round the corner okay. aside here. Um, if we look at it in this map, um, you can see it's here. So they're proposing to remove that off of the garage mm -hmm. I'm assuming and it looks like they've got a shed possibly here. Um, on the site plan, um, sorry, that. they indicate I think that they've got three spaces to the front. The existing parking. Do you think do you interpret what is that? And then they're talking about removing to say this garage here. What, what, what is that? The, the area on, on the right, which to me looks as if it's a house next door, but I don't know. Sorry, yes. this one. Yeah, yes. Uh so that's the that's um a bungalow next door, and this is a bungalow behind. Right. Um so if I go back to the Image here. So this is the bungalow here. Um, but no, your cursor is, is is owned by the applicant property, and they're proposing yeah. to. So they have they have approval for the hydrotherapy pool. I think it's to the rear of the property, mm -hmm. um, and then they're looking to put a two-story extension to the side. So if I spin it round. Um, so so uh, it's an attached. So it's garage to the next property. I think so. From what they're yeah, they're just knocking down that that garage. Maybe, maybe the garage. Um, and the, the two-story yeah. extension come out sort of mm -hmm. in this section here. Um, so again, from the rear, you can see mm -hmm. developing that spot there. Assume they have the neighbours' cooperation on that. Yeah. Do I have any objections, Bertie? Um, Not on this application, although there appears to have been a, after we met, mm. um, 
12 days later after on the previous application there was a representation that went through you know, we were objecting the fact that the um, site notice hadn't been visible at the end of the road. Um, so that was. Councillor Crumley, um, I, I, I don't like it. Um, it seemed to me that the um, extension was not completed and no properly subservient <laughs> to the main body, which is always a no no for me. Um, I find it very strange that they appear to be demolishing. Um, <laughs> property that's physically attached to the adjoining property unless I've got it um, um, completely wrong. So I'm not happy with it. I, I, I will be objecting. Councillor Lister. Yeah, I mean, it's rather than unusual. I mean, the, the thing that concerns me specifically is the objection from the neighbour was that there wasn't sufficient notice or visible notice. Um, it may be that they're not aware of this proposal that will involve knocking down half of this cabbage. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I would propose that. Well, what, what was proposed? Propose that we object on the basis that. Well, I think, so the point is, I guess that the neighbour, that because the site notices were posted on the front of the the property, then the the, the neighbour behind wouldn't ever see it. That's, I guess, the point. I guess. Um, yeah. Um, should we have to uh, think of this application? Yes. Sort of like, yeah. As yeah. As to what was Concluded. Yeah, sure. Mm. I think uh, I, I'd expect to see this come forward with the other with the property owner as part of the application. I know you can you can you can apply for anything, can't you, without the consent mm. of anybody if you wish. So it's not improper. So mm. that's how I'm interpreting it. It says yeah, literally it's in converted yeah. Unless that's um a garage that's there. Next door neighbor. It, oh, unless it's that, it's difficult to tell from yeah. these drawings. Um, the drawings are not helpful at all. No. no. Um, looking well, I'm saying object. So. On what grounds? So, I'll think it's something. <laughs> <laughs> well, inadequate, in, 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 inadequate drawings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lack of sort of. Um, the extent of not being subservient to the uh, it was, I think, I think it was like, I think it was again, it was yeah. adequately, uh, it, it was um, uh, at the previous one, it was only there may have been a slight drop, but it's sort of thing that needs to be in my view, so to be clearly marked out as such. Um, uh, is it can you look at the other the elevations? They they are sort of uh, yeah well it's barely there yeah so um, I I would propose to object on the basis of the lack of clarity involved of knocking down a residence garage. Well, lack of clarity. Lack of clarity. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, lack of clarity in in the drawings of the intention of the developer of, of the proposal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. And uh, with spe with specific reference to the the um demolition of the garage and mention of the garage. Yeah. 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 So I propose that. Okay, thank you. That's two proposals. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're basically the same. Same thing. Proposes <laughs> 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 those in favour of that proposal and say that is unanimous. Thank you. Yeah, before you go on to uh, yeah. further, yeah. we just ask our visitors if they have a particular interest. In any particular application. Are you interested in anything particular in particular? You're just interested in the process. Yeah. So, yeah okay. So, uh, we don't have to change your job. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So moving on to uh, one two four Bath Road. So um, this is an application. Uh, for proposed roof alterations to create a new half hip gable to the front elevation and a new dormer to the west side of the roof. Um, so this is the plot mm -hmm. here. Um, the proposal is to fill in this area here to, I think, extend the bedroom to the front. Um, there is an existing bedroom here and they're proposing to put a dormer in. These are dormers that were put in on a previous application, I think in 2019, um, where 
Thatcher and Town Council had no objections to at the time. Um, so, could I could I ask you to speak up a little more? Sorry, Thank you. I just missed that. Did, was there a pre? <laughs> no, there was. If I just the doors. I just go back up to here. So they're proposing to fill in this area at the front of the property I and mean, it's slightly set back you know, to bring a, um, a bedroom forward. Um, then there's a bedroom against this bit here, um, which they're looking to put a dormer in there. Um, <clears throat> these dormers were previously approved at an application in 2019, um, where Thatcher and Town Council had no objections at the time. Looking at them on the plans, mm. they appear to be um, lit from above. There is not windows to the side of the dormers. Um, here and here. Um, the proposal, proposed drawings, show this hip roof being filled in to bring this bedroom forward to the front. Um, they have amended their drawings since, but that says side elevation. That was actually the front elevation. I'm losing you again. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, so I know this says side elevation, but they have actually amended their drawings since <laughs> they um, uploaded this. Um, that is the front elevation. Um, so these are the changes to the front and the proposed new um, dormer. And it's here to the west side with a window this time overlooking. Um, so that's that bit there. So the bedroom existed along there. They're just looking mm. to go out a fraction. Um, so if I take you to have a look at the property itself, it's this one here. Now you can't see the the dormers that have been put in um, because they're not showing. But when I drove past earlier today, you can see that they're in place and so forth. Um, <clears throat> just trying to. What about the A4? Is it? So it's opposite Faircross Court. Um, so that old... That's that, that, that's very old. That that's drawing because that's yeah. that's been replaced by houses. Then. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what so what labeled as on the photograph of Fairfax yeah. Court is, is 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 that's some sort of um yeah. so that, business like that's been replaced that by Bourne Road. So that's Bourne Road. Yeah. Right, okay. So it's built okay. back yeah. onto Bourne Road. It's before you get to the service road, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's this property here. So yeah. the dormers put to both sides here and here, and they're looking to put an extra dormer and fill in that gap there. Mm. Um, there has been one representation. Um, they appear to be happy with the proposed changes to the roof line to the front of the house, um, but raised an objection to the proposed dormer um, on the west side, um, as likely to block the majority of their light for their east facing kitchen. Um, they did not object to a previous dormer roof extension. Um, but it has impeded their lives. Uh, but they felt it was okay at the time, but they believe that this would have a bigger effect in there. That's because it would overlook the property to the west as mm. well. Yeah. yeah. Did happen? you, so, Jim, can I just clarify, did you mention that the um, residents living on the west side uh, were commenting that, that it, it would impede their light, is that, is that what was said? Yeah. Is in in uh, you would know this, Jim. In planning terms, is the loss of light uh, a material planning consideration? Yeah, it is. Thank you. It <clears> is <throat> not the loss of a view. Yes, yeah. less uh, not of light. Mm. Yeah. So, and it is extreme. It is at, right up on the on the boundary, isn't it? There. So, uh, Councillor Crumley. Um, if you look at the. Uh, the, the uh, the beginning of the house as, uh, as it is, I think it's already been uh, ruined by uh, the, uh, the planning the, consideration. The, the, um, mm. the new dormer, uh, I think, it's, I don't like them. I think, uh, uh, in, uh, frankly, mm. hideous. 
next door neighbours objecting and so uh, well, I won't be I won't be supporting this. I think we should we should object. Any further comments? Uh, particularly bearing in mind the objection from the neighbour. Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm slightly concerned about that if uh, uh, because it does look to be very close to the boundary mm. and uh, um, yeah, blocking out lights. So we might have concerns too. So I'll give way to uh, my. Co we have a proposal to object from Councillor Crumley. Is there a seconder for that? So in that case, are those in favour of objecting to this proposal? On the grounds of? On the grounds of the the uh, the loss of the, the, the loss of light, the obstruction of lights to the neighbouring property as in the uh, representations. And I'd say the form and form and quality of the uh, proposed door map, which uh, I'm sure is contrary to planning policy. Well, they've got two which look quite similar apart from the yes, position of the windows. But yeah, I know, as I was saying, yeah. I knew that was the, the problem. Yeah. But, uh, in fact, the sun has dropped from last yeah. year. doesn't mean we should go through this time. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. thank you. Chairman, um, you're heading towards item four. I am, yes. Before we go into it, can we just have a clarification on what the proposal is? Because I'm a bit confused. Uh, uh, which item, what the proposal for item four this is? Item four. Yeah, well, uh, uh, I guess uh, two, four, uh, ma ma Madam Deputy Clark, I assume you'll be uh, explaining all, all, all will be revealed on screen. Oh, lovely, thank you. Um, so, so this is um, proposed to so I thought this <laughs> sheet is so. Um, so this is a proposal for um, to extend a bungalow to form a house um, with a single storey extension to the side of it. Um, so they're going to um, convert the property that exists there at the moment. Um, so I'm not sure <coughs> where it is it might make more sense. <coughs> um, so this property here. Mm -hmm. um, um, they're looking to go up a story and to the side single story. Um, Is that next to the Christadelphian church? Yes. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Um, and looking at a different view, it looks like next to it was demolished and rebuilt or something at some point. Um, they have around it. Um, they've got some garden to the front at the moment and they seem to have quite an extensive sort of parking bit to rear of the property well here yeah. go around the back um sorry i'm making you dizzy <laughs> uh so yes that's the existing mm. property at the moment um going back to the plans so it looks like um, I'm proposing I've got parking spaces here. Um, this is the existing plan at the moment. Um, another one who doesn't like to put bedrooms or anything on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got some blank spaces. Um, I'm wondering if it's the same drafts. <laughs> um, so this is the current elevations, and these are the proposed. Elevations and plans, and just shrink that down a fraction. Can you see that okay? Yeah. Um, so, we're looking at the front elevation here with the side elevation, single story there, Got the rear elevation here. Uh, they're looking to um, the garden room. In this single story, get to the side, um, and then go upstairs and put four bedrooms in upstairs and a dressing room mm -hmm. downstairs. Um, I don't know what these will be, whether they're still going to be retained as bedrooms or something else. But... Well, that actually makes a difference on the parking, doesn't it? Yeah. Um... Mm 
Well, I think um, our, our um, view is about parking is subject to <clears throat> what they be consistent. I don't see what the street view was because um, it might show that it looked like there's parking behind the building. Yeah, now yeah. just looking at my, my, my worry. Yeah, that it's, um, the point is that it's it's one of these questions that if there's notional parking which is so inaccessible that it doesn't get used, and I was noting that the there's quite a large grass frontage which I believe I would guess is part is highway yeah. land. Uh, which might uh, be be surreptitiously used for parking rather than having to drive because you if you've got one vehicle around it it'll obstruct the others mm -hmm. there seems um, to be indicating that the parking will be yeah but that's the point is that you've got you've got that you've got one one effectively either of those cars will almost make it make it impossible to access um and it's got also existing access and parking on what i think is highways land which is a bit um, um so So, um, comments on this, Councillor Lister? Uh, I, I was going to say no objections, actually. I thought there was sufficient yeah. parking in the park. So, uh, so I, mean, I do notice there's yeah. tie marks on the grass there, but yeah. from recollection driving past there, I can't recall seeing so, cars parked there. Could I make a, a specific proposal that we make no objections on condition that the, 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 the asset there is uh, that meets the criteria for parking uh, with clarification on what those two rooms, whether those two rooms are bedrooms, and that parking should they should not be counting parking on on highways land as part of the um, mm. as part of the available parking. I would second that, Chairman. Yeah. Thank you. Those in favour? Thank you. Well, I better probably write the deputy clerk to write that down. <laughs> Yeah, particularly if you start saying that um, land that's not yours is part of your parking, and that's yeah. mm. it does help happen elsewhere, as we know. Just a few places around the town. Sure. Okay. You got that. Item five. Mm. All right. So this is Alston News. Um, they're looking for a first floor bedroom extension. Um, the property is on the corner here. Um, sorry, going the wrong way. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're just looking to extend at the front here. Um, it's a three bedroom property with quite a small bedroom at the front, and then extend the floor space to the front of the property here. Um, Over what is effectively a porch, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the hall is the hall. It's like next door's already done it, actually. Yeah, they have. Um, so we already have precedent. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah, there's the hall in the study. And they're looking to go over the top of it. Councillor Lister, there's no objection. Second. Yeah. You have content? No, for those in favour of making no objection? Raise no objection. Thank you. No objection, unanimous. So we then move on to one which might get a different result. Just the majority. Yeah, it, well, yes, yes, but it's in place. Uh, well, it says cold ash award at the on the left. Second column, it says cold ash. I know. So it's only just the joining by. Um, so. <laughs> so you are um, opposite the uh, the other land at Lawrence's Lane. So it's immediately opposite the um, oh, start field again. traveller side. Yeah, it came before with nine houses, I think, and this time it's come with twenty-three houses. That was a, was a, a um, application principle. principle. Yeah. So this is now uh, an application outline application for access only. If I recall, they're only asking for access at the, at the moment. Oh yes. Um, but they've shown a plan for twenty-three houses in there. I think, isn't it twenty-three? So it previously came before us um, in October 2021, where it was a permission in principle um, for nine dwellings. Um, we, the town council went back with, uh, it objected on the grounds of the site outside the settlement boundary, mm -hmm. access is inappropriate, Lawrence Lane is narrow and unsuitable for any increase in traffic. 
Uh, the application conflicts with the West Berkshire Council's proposal to restrict access and makes Lawrence's Lane a route for active travel and leisure use, uh, which Batchman Town Council supported when consulted, um, and also access to the site through South Bend is unsuitable. Those were the four main points mm -hmm. that went back to. Um, so this site, uh, now again, um, with outline planning permission, with some matters reserved for up to 23 first homes, which are entry level affordable housing uh, with associated parking and some private community area. And in this occasion, it's the matters to be considered or access. Um, <clears throat> so this is the site. Um, it varies. That's another historic photograph because yeah. the, uh, the east of the road, Lawrence Lane is no longer like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there we go, just there. Mm. Okay. This is the proposal um, for access mm. onto here. Um, they are proposing a passing bay just here. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is more detailed uh, with the mm -hmm. details of visibility displays and mm -hmm. the parking bay here. Um, <clears throat> chairman, sit, chairman. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, in their design and access statement, uh, they have tried to address um, the response from uh, highways from the last mm -hmm. application of the PIP. On, um, I, think the I, I think the emphasis is on the words tried to, having read it. Because mm -hmm. um, they have, have provided a highways uh, re report for this one. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so it's opposite the other, uh, the, the other Lawrence's Lane site. Uh, Councillor Woodhams. Um, I, I realise that we're only considering uh, access, yes. but I've never seen first homes as a description hmm. of, of an application. Yeah, are, are they actually going to suggest that they're going to interview uh, everybody <laughs> and, and make sure that this is their first home? Um, I'm assuming that as they're only asking for permission for access, uh -huh. we can't rely on that statement because they're not asking for, for that level of that aspect of permission at this in this application. Well, that's true, but if we could mention that in, in a future potential planning application, could they define what they mean by first homes? Um, I think that they're, well, well, we'll see what our decision is, but we may decide that we don't want to see a future application, in which case we'll be able to. Um, um, I did mention the word potential. Yeah, but I don't think we want to encourage them. So, Councillor Lister. Yeah, oh, sorry. So, yeah. in the design and access statement, it does provide more details on the first homes. Yeah. Um, but as they're, only asked, as they're only applying for access, I don't think we can rely on that statement as being um, what will come forward for, would come forward for detailed planning. If these aren't first, no, this is this is. Um, well, if, if, as I say, they, they are. They, it is proper houses, but as they're only asking for permission for access, then uh, what they say is uh, subject to future applications. They're not committing. I don't believe in that case. Yeah, um, in the water. Uh, Okay, I, I was going to propose, given that what's been presented, mm. there's no material change to our previous reasons. For well, I, I just multi multiply it by 23 over 9, I think. Yeah, but in terms of the access, the access conditions yeah. are the same, it's like the planning uh, yeah. development uh, boundary, and um, the road, that lane, as we know, Councillor Crumley might have a different view, uh, but I do not think it's appropriate for um, yeah. assuming that that level of development can, can come off it. I would object on the same grounds as previous, mm. I don't think anything's changed. Mm. Can I mention the issue of our flooding? Yeah. yeah, because obviously it's uh, cl close to the adjoining site, which you have uh, referred. Uh, if there's any flooding issues, it could be a problem. Um, I was just well, there's a question about the relationship between this and that because that's subject to an appeal at the moment. But um, part of the proposal that was put forward by the drainage engineer was to discharge some of the water from the site into that site. Um, <laughs> Right. And um, because I know that site, I also uh, I believe that the the sub at the top of that plan is in fact at a higher elevation than some of the properties, which is always an interesting concept. Um, <laughs> so there's um, a lot of water flowing uphill. Another one, yes, yeah, so another one of those. Um, so uh, 
but that's of course not part of this application because they no doubt will would, would come forward and of course the other thing to say is that it's also adjacent to uh, the cops which is ancient woodland but that is um, probably more of a cold ash matter because that's the opposite side so uh, given that access given that um the lawrence's lane is the, the, the parish boundary runs along the Lawrence's lane and the matter is that, that we're considering is access then we probably ought to focus more on access i see a member of the public asking uh if we happy to for them to make a comment Mm. Uh, to make a cut comment. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm sorry, I haven't written the design access statement. Is part of their proposal to include a public a footpath to access the site on Lawrence's Lane, as well as the um, no, lay by? No, it's the answer. No footpath. No footpath. And they, in fact, they, they, they also make a statement that it's used by dog walkers, but they don't think there are many pedestrians, many walkers using the, the roads. So, um, the, um, so perhaps if we, um, I think probably, can I suggest that we repeat the we 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 repeat the objections that we made uh, to the previous uh, one with the additional point that um, we disagree with their statements about um, dog walkers and pedestrians. People, and that, people with first homes, for example, will be presumably having young children who want to be pushing their children mm. to the town. Yeah, sustainable yeah. transport. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So there's definitely an issue there. Yeah. Um, but my other concern, if I may, is that if if the Lawrence's site on the other side is put, given permission um, without the need for a footpath, then could a consultant conceivably say that, well, if it went to inquiry, that, that, that there wouldn't be a need for a footpath because yeah. the other site doesn't need a footpath? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a cumulative effect yeah. here as well. And we might end up with two late boys. Too late by them. Yeah, no football. So I think the point is, for the purposes of this, this one, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll um, we disagree about. Well, I don't think for not to raise this explicitly to say the race, but I think it's unsuitable for pedestrian access. We'll say the road as it stands is is not suitable for pedestrian access, and we disagree with their views about the usage of it by um, for, for, for dog walkers and pedestrians. It's clear they claim as it is in frequency use. Yeah, the claim, the claim, the, their claims about the the seconded uh, chairman. Thank you. Oh, do we have a name of the applicant? Is that, um, the well, we have a. It will be on the application form, but um, that 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 is only the agent. It may it may not be the same company, but yeah. Uh, all those in favour. Those in favour of objecting on those of your proposal. Numerous grounds. Yes. Yeah. We'll need to have special meeting, alternate meetings of planning and highways for Lawrence's lane matters now. So uh, there are two which are two which we have um, uh, not considered unless representations have been made. Have they been made? Thank you. No, uh, so, uh, so we move on to planning matters. Anything uh, arising since the publication of the agenda? Um, nothing from the chairman. Thank you. Agenda item 12, traffic management, highways, and road safety matters. Um, so just one, I've got highlighted that um, we've been notified that um, there will be the removal of the orcas on the A4, mm. um, and that was to be carried out through this from the 7th to the 13th of December, I believe driving through the they've, they've gone. Mm, yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, so yeah, that was just to advise you that that was taking place. I do take issue, Mr. Chairman, with their description of light segregation, because because the dirt covered them and you couldn't see them at all. So I don't know where light came into it. Yeah, uh, I was going to, well, there's one extra point there that um, they were talking about refreshing certain sections of line marking is planned for the new year, and I know that we have previously raised um, line markings in that in the general area. So what I was going to suggest is that we uh, collect suggestions for uh, other areas of deficiencies of line, line and road markings, which could be done at the same time. Oh. Um, particular Councillor Woodhams, you might have a few in mind. I have a list. I have a list. So if we suggest that we, we, we um, uh, let me think, you're, you're away soon. Um, so, and you're back. Oh, sorry. After Christmas. Before you mean after Christmas or after the New Year? Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, are we Tuesday, Thursday? Can people do that by 
Can you do it tomorrow? Well, I've already submitted. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll just, if, if, if we can get your list for tomorrow so that you can write and make that suggestion uh, for so, Yeah. Oh, well, this, this refresh certain sections. Is this rumble strips? I've heard that the um, rumble strips, uh, which we've already from that on other. Uh, I don't know that, that that has been mentioned, but I'm thinking that that's, that's sort of outside of our control. But if, if they're going to have line marking people in, then they can uh, do other things that need attention at the same time. That was so if they're just white lines, and they'll get obscured by muck and mud, just as the yeah. walkers have. Well, no, not so much because they they the, the, you know, they get brushed and and vehicles do go over them and so on. But yeah, it is a problem. And, and there's also the the question of the in the east of the town that the line markings are not in accordance with the um, highway uh, with the, the, the signage manual. There's the issue of cost because I think we had government money for the installation of these orchids, and now we're uh, taking the we are saying right. council <laughs> taking them out. Uh, who's paying for all this? We've got to you know, send money back to the to the government, or I nobody <laughs> know or care. Um, what else? Yeah. That might be a question to put directly to um, uh, to, to, to West Berkshire Council, um, but probably not a matter for us to talk about directly. One other thing yeah. that occurred to me, I'm trying to go back to the Lawrence's Lane uh, um, application. Um, yeah. uh, can we notify the appropriate uh, district council to keep an eye on this um, uh, um, an application? So if there's any suggestion we're being granted, it goes to the Eastern Area Planning Committee. Yeah. Okay. Um, that would be an adjacent parish, so that would I think that's still covered. Okay. I think yeah. One, I don't. I don't. Think, yeah. I don't think you can. I don't think you need to worry too much about this one um, uh, going through without um, without seeing because it's okay. it's outside the settlement boundary. I would have thought that the councils, the officers, would call it in, but it certainly will. Um, yeah, we don't want somebody to wake up and find that it's been granted. Yeah, yeah. By default. Mm -hmm. Can I just clarify the Chairman? Are you inviting Deputy Clark to include my list? Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that yours is included, but if anyone knows of anything else, we'll, we'll add that at the same time. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I, I still have not heard back from the yeah. Highways um, Management uh, Team, I think the Asset Team, mm -hmm. it's a very fancy title, and, yeah. and that was first lodged in August. Yeah. And what I want to add at the moment is the, um, as you the junction between um, the moors and the A4, as you approach the A4, uh, the, the the markings on the uh, for the junction are, are almost completely gone. It's another one to add. Thank you. Anyway, we'll. we'll... Can I just ask that everyone just emails me those and yeah? Could you email are. again? Email again so that we've got email again. Well, the point is, it's, it's, right. it's, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to keep track of um, uh, flood emails if you if they're all in, in especially all my emails. Well, it's actually more a question of titles and knowing what to search for. Of course, <laughs> we get lots of stuff. When I get home tonight, okay. I will do it. Right. Like that, I think is uh, twelve a any further traffic management, highways and road safety matters. Uh, no, nothing for me, Chairman. Thank you. So we move on to decision notices. Right, so we're up to nine o'clock. I think we're just in time. Um, so No objections approved. Holding. House. Um, <coughs> you see, having objections. Uh, West Berkshire Council has refused. Um, and the lodge is a modest attached dwelling with historical connection to former manor, Crookham House. Uh, located in the countryside and adjacent to the land, the proposed extensions, by reason of their sighting scale, mass, and bulk, represent overly dominant and disputed mm -hmm. traditions which fail to respect or harmonize mm -hmm. with the appearance of each property or appear subservient to it. Um, the resultant appear more prominent, more congruous in this location than the existing property, particularly to the east and west, where the dwelling will be framed by the above ground extension drawing the eye away from the host dwelling. Proposals would therefore harm the rural character and setting in application of the site. 
In Congress, I think was the In other words, they didn't like it. <laughs> it didn't seem very keen, did it? I agree. So, so that, that, was, that was the launch. That was, yeah, I think the rest went through yeah. an approval. Okay, thank you. So that brings us to the end of decision notices, and therefore, uh, no, we have one over the page. Uh, report from town council um, uh, appointees to other outside bodies. Um, so, Councillor Lillicrop, uh, any flood matters? Nothing really to report, Chair. Um, our next meeting on the 5th of January, we should have an update on the uh, work on North and East Thatcham schemes. And the, uh, the the planning work is still in progress for the Memphill. Okay. The Memphield. The Memphield, rather, yeah. Thank you. No, we're not knocking down the Memphill. Thank you. Just so Memphill. Uh, that brings us to the end of the agenda. Okay. And with that, and with just in time, the meeting is therefore closed. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Ah.